Jerry, I'll do that. I'll, I'll prop the pages for you. Uh, I just wanted to give another intro of uh, One Virtual Source, which together with my office, um, we came into a conversation less than a year ago, and I said, JR, we need a global marketplace for the amazing services that the Philippines churns out. And now we've become um, number one in voice services. But the Philippine government feels that we just we don't need to stop there. We can do higher value services and go up the value chain and churn out more valuable services. Um, so we came up with this idea. It's something like eBay, except that we don't sell goods, we sell Philippine services to the US and the global market. And, and that's what we're trying to do. So it's not a startup from the Philippines, it's a, it's a startup from here that, that we're collaborating on the Philippine services delivery platform. The Philippines is the pilot country of the virtual source. And because it's a startup, there's sustainability. If it's a government funded undertaking, will have problems with funding right away and you know it, it, things that would, wouldn't happen otherwise uh, if uh, you know but here it is and uh, it's operating as a startup it's going to get funded and it's also looking for markets here in the US what 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 is it what's in it for the Filipino American here or the or the US uh, startup here or the, the US professional here if you're an architect, for example, you're an artist, you normally cannot bid for projects that are in the beyond your league because you only have a team of five. If, if you're an architect, you want to bid for a multi-million dollar project, then you normally you need about what a team of 50. This platform can provide that team for you in the Philippines for a fraction of the cost. And that's that's one of the benefits. But I'll, I'll leave JR to the first. Okay. But I'm just very excited about it. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, JR Kalanoff with One Virtual Source. Um, so I'm here tonight to talk about the Philippine Services Delivery Platform. Basically, that's a joint project between the Department of Trade and One Virtual Source. So. But this all started was about eight months ago. It was a conversation with uh, Mike in his office and uh, their ideas and their questions on um, how can we promote Philippine companies in the software development space, in the uh, technology space, creative, design, uh, call center, BPO services. How can we take these really talented companies in the Philippines and promote them to the U.S. market? Maybe why not stop at the U.S. market? How do we promote them to the rest of the world? Um, so. What we did was we reached out to some uh, Silicon Valley uh, uh, colleagues and uh, from there we were able to find our first four investors and our core team. Um, so uh, my name is JR, that's me. Um, I have about eight years in the finance industry and management. I've um, been working with uh, software developers, uh, companies in the Philippines for the last two years. Um, our COO, Nancy Wong, um, she is a Stanford grad, she did her MBA at UCLA. She's uh, doing our um, operations and strategy. Um, Alda Long, who uh, did her uh, bachelor's and her uh, master's at MIT, she's the one handling our development. So she's making sure that the, the, the platform gets built properly and everything's working and it's a really pleasure to watch them work. And then for our investors and our finance division, we have Akko, who did his MBA at Rollins College. Akko Dixon, guy from uh, uh, England, he's here um, and a uh, part of the team. So, and of course, our advisors with the um, and partners with the Philippine Consulate and Department of Trade. Thanks. Okay, so what is one virtual source? Uh, basically, it's a place when great people come together, great businesses come together, great things happen. Next slide. So there's two parts to it. It's kind of hard to see here, but um, the first part is an online marketplace where a customer can connect with a vendor through a bidding platform that we provide. So that's part one. What's part two? Part two is a workspace um, where the customer and the vendor can communicate, they can collaborate, and they can create projects of all kinds. Right. So next slide. So this is how it works. Um, Okay, so if a U.S. company uh, depicted by the little building there has an idea, has a business need, um, for example, a U.S. business needs to create an iOS app or Android app or, uh, or a website, 
That US business will then um, go through the platform, go through the website, um, describe what it is that they need. Okay, well, um, uh, we, we ask them to fill out a templatized system. As they log on, they'll say, well, our budget is about $5,000. Our time frame is about maybe uh, three months. And I'm looking for developers who have done this before and can show me a portfolio of three other applications that, uh, that they've done. So we ask the customers to really create a robust um, information, put their robust information on what they're looking for when they post it to the site. Right? Um, now, on the supplier side, it makes us different from a, uh, some other platforms that are out there. We have connected with Philippine, top Philippine companies, um, and we've qualified these top Philippine companies um, based on um, the size of the company, uh, years in business, and their portfolio. So what we ask is, when the suppliers or the vendors in the Philippines, as our pilot country, bids for a project, they post, well, I have 200 employees, I've been in business since um, 2005, and I've done that exact type of app that you're looking for, all right? So I wanna post that on the platform and make a bid on your project. So what happens now is the US customer is able to make an intelligent choice on which vendor they want to choose from the Philippines. It's a blind bidding process. So they're able to really choose and find the best fit for them, not just based on price, but based on experience as well. Um, it is free for a customer uh, in the US to post a project on the platform. And it's also free for a vendor to be able to bid on the project. Right? I'll get into the business plan a little bit later. But that's part one. It's an online marketplace where we connect people. Part two. Uh, this is kind of where the magic happens, and this is where a lot of our development project and a lot of our development um, uh, uh, focus has gone into. Um, we've created an online platform, cloud-based, everything you can reach from wherever you are, where a customer and a supplier, once connected, can work together on this online platform. So once you're connected, you're able to sign contracts on the platform, you're able to check your status of your project on the platform, you can see the project plan on both the customer side and the uh, vendor side. You can talk to each other via email all on the platform and see each other via video on the platform through video conferencing. Um, all your document management and all your documents is stored um, online cloud based. And the milestones, um, all the milestones that you set at the start of the project, as each milestone gets hit, um, you also make each payment for each qualified and approved milestone through the website as well. So we've created an online platform that allows you not only to hook up with some really good vendors, but to work with them on an online space from wherever you are. Um, and that's, uh, that's a high level explanation of what, um, uh, what our platform is. Thanks. So what's the market opportunity? So the first thing we did was, so the numbers are really small, so you can't see, I can't see either, but what the first thing we did was we looked at the outsourcing market in general. Huge market, it's a $300 billion market that's growing every year. Um, what we then started looking at, because of the advent of cloud, the cloud-based uh, technology and companies and uh, individuals being open to the cloud-based, uh, to cloud-based work, um, we looked at the uh, enterprise online labor marketplace, which is what we have built, um, the online labor marketplace, online workplace. Um, and in this online workplace, in 2012, it was, a one, it was a $1 billion market, jumped up to a $2 billion market in 2014, and it's estimated to be a $5 billion market in 2017. So its annual growth rate is around 40%, which is huge, right? So we're looking to jump into that spot. Now there are only two companies currently that hold 75% of this market. So it's a young market and definitely some space for entrants to come in. Oh, look over here. Um, one of the things that got our team very excited about this, um, about this online market as well is, most of the buyers that we've had uh, or that we've seen in the last four or five years have been small businesses that work with individual freelancers. Um, what's happening now is that Adobe, Amazon, Pinterest, Dropbox, Walt is the enterprise sized companies are reaching out to the online marketplace and they're reaching out for the talent and they're reaching out for the, for the new blood out there um, and, they're, uh, and they're getting a lot of the, uh, their projects done online. Um, next slide. So like I mentioned, next slide. So like I mentioned, there are uh, two companies out there that hold 75% of this online marketplace. That they've been up for about three, four, uh, actually they've been up for a while, but in the last three, four, five years, they've really kicked up their game. Um, so Elance, uh, who works with freelancers around the world, in the last five or six years have done over $806 million in revenue towards their freelancers. There's, there's some in the Philippines as well. 
Um, they've done, in the last three days, 93,000 development um, jobs and different types of jobs posted onto the online workspace. 90,000 jobs in the last 30 days, all on lens around the world. Um, uh, another major company uh, that holds 75%, uh, half that 75% of the market is Odesk. In 2012, um, last year, they had 1.5 million jobs posted on the online marketplace. And there's these two companies that do this, um, and they work with freelancers. So our team, what did we do? We looked at the market, and we saw, okay, how can we make this market better? Um, what's missing in the market? What can we do to, to change it up a little bit? Next slide. Um, we said that, okay, here are the problems. There's definitely a variance in quality of the work delivered. That's because the market is, um, the, the vendors are freelancers. Sometimes you never really know what you're going to get. It's someone who's sitting somewhere. Um, you never, you don't know what their, uh, you don't know what their qualifications are when they come in. Some you do, some you don't. You get, you never know what you're going to get. Um, the second issue is that there's a limited ability to support enterprise-sized projects. So if you find a freelancer that does a really good job, if you're a small business and you're starting to grow, and your project is really starting to boom, you're not able to grow your project with that one freelancer. Um, it's very hard for you to scale up. And uh, you'll ask with us and some of these uh, companies have built their platform based on a uh, based on an individual to small size company uh, type of platform. Um, where we want to be, where OVS wants to be, and where we are positioning ourselves, next slide please, thank you, is we are focusing on the business to business aspect, B2B. Um, we're looking to connect qualified Philippine companies that with a partnership with the Department of Trade and Investment initially starting in the Philippines, we are, uh, we, are, uh, we are vetting these Philippine companies that they are who they are, that they have the certification that they have, the portfolios they have are real, and these companies we are able to connect to enterprise-sized companies here in the U.S. Um, on the chart, on the left side, it shows qualified companies, individual freelancers on the bottom, and then uh, larger companies on the right. So we are able to connect uh, qualified companies to enterprise, but also be able to connect small to medium-sized uh, developers in the Philippines as well as freelancers. Uh, next slide. So what's our timeline? So eight months ago when we first started to do this, the first thing we wanted to do is we wanted to first reach out to the Philippine companies and ask them, um, hey, does this make sense to you guys? Is this something you would do? And we definitely got an overwhelming yes to the Philippine companies for several reasons. One, obviously they're able to get, um, they're able to get uh, reach to another market in the US. Two, was more of a Filipino pride type of feeling where they said, I've done all this work, nobody knows I've done it because I'm under NDA through a third party customer. So now I'm able to reach out to US customers and I'm able to do the work and they're going to see that this was done by a Filipino. They're going to see that we did this. And then that's going to help create the branding of the Philippines, that we do quality work, that you know, the Philippines is a place to go to for this type of development, for all types of development. Um, so that was the first thing we did. Then after we got them, we reached out to the Department of Trade and said, hey guys, your idea is looking good. <laughs> it's, it's starting to work. Um, we wanted to institutionalize this process with the uh, Department of Trade, which we've, uh, which we've done. Um, and that means is once we go live, and we're shooting for November 21 as a go live day, we're going to be working with the consulates around the U.S. initially to promote this to all the Filipino businesses and to Philam businesses and to the American businesses around the U.S. Chicago, New York, um, uh, Washington D.C., Seattle, L.A., um, and hopefully um, in other, uh, and then we move on to other countries. Um, and that's the partnership we have. So. The next step was last month, we had actually taken a trip to the Philippines to sign up more companies. And just to, if you can switch to the next slide really quick, we're gonna go back. Um, what we found was amazing. Um, we signed up about 20 companies, top companies in the Philippines, companies that already do about $5 million to $25 million in sales a year, but mostly a CN, um, barely in the US market. Uh, what we found is these guys were awesome, amazing, passionate about what they're doing, are doing quality work that, and work that we don't know that they're doing um, around the world. You can go back to the timeline. Um, so the next part of our timeline is we are potentially, we are launching November 21st here. Um, everybody that uh, leaves your email will send you an invite to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to our launch date. Um, January, we go full-blown um, uh, marketing. And at the end of next year, our, um, our numbers were projected to hit $1.5 million in OVS revenue if we hit all our, uh, all our uh, marketing goals. So that's our timeline. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So how does OVS monetize? Um, monetize and how do we make money? So one virtual source, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't cost anything for the free for um, for uh, customers to post a project. It doesn't cost anything 
for the vendors to bid. What we do is we do charge an 8.75% fee for any project that is approved through the platform. So when work is done and it's ready to go through, we charge an 8.75 fee for using the platform. That's one of our, um, that's one of our, uh, our revenue strategies. Uh, in the future, we'll have strategies on um, memberships and other, uh, and other type of uh, verticals. Uh, next slide. So we are in our first phase of funding. Uh, we are shooting to raise $300,000 to hit our projected marketing goals. Um, we've currently raised $85,000 um, in the friends and family round. Um, what we're offering is a 1% interest in the company for a $10,000 investment. Um, a $10,000 investment, uh, if our projects, uh, our projections are realized, will uh, equate to a 315,000 uh, payout uh, when we exit uh, at year five. Is when we're looking at. So that's one virtual source. Again, my name is GR Kalmak. I will stay here all night to chat for anybody that uh, wants to talk about uh, about the program. I hope that uh, you're interested in investing, um, or at the very least, please help us in spreading the word that the Philippines has some amazing <coughs> developers, and that if you know anybody out there that's looking for any projects, send them our way. So thank you.